In the past few years, we've seen some tiny handhelds, but none have come close to our favorite Mio Mini. It even emulated Amiga. Now we have a new contender by Ambernic. Can this ultra-tiny handheld blow everything out of the water? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. <laughs> so this package came to us from our friends at Lingzuk. They sent us this product here in exchange for the video review. The box itself was wrapped in air bubbles. And here it is. This is a blue one. 128 gigs. Nothing really to see on the box, except for it's made in China. Beverly has one of those and it smells fun. First sight, it looks quite nice. On the top we've got the manual. And inside it's full of hotkeys and bits and bobs. On one side it's English, and in the other it's Chinese. I love myself a bit of Chinese. I'm John... Yes, you're John Luke. We get a keyring so we can attach it to our bag. Ooh, and here's the handheld. In the box at the bottom, we have a USB-C to headphone jack, and a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. Ooh. There's a phone cover to protect the controls. And yeah, this is cute. It's got a 1.54 inch display, 240 by 240 resolution, and the controls are reminiscent of the Super Nintendo control pad, and the looks of a Nintendo Game Boy. At the bottom is the mono speaker. And on the right we have a micro SD card slot, as well as the menu button. But with the RG Nano, the micro SD card is very difficult to remove. Inside we have the generic 128GB micro SD. These won't last very long, so it's recommended to change to a reliable one as soon as you can. And getting it back in is equally as difficult. About time. Along the top we have two shoulder buttons, L and R, and a USB-C to charge. Other than that, the case is pretty simple, but we need to mention that the metal feels very nice. It's solid, and I don't think it's going to break very soon. Let's have a look at the controls. D-pad is very squishy. Even though there's a slight tactile feel to the buttons, they're also pretty squishy too. As I the start and select, and moving to the L and R, Wow. Click a Rooney. About time for the size comparison. The RG Nano is about the same size as a Game Gear Micro. Except the screen's a bit bigger. It's absolutely dwarfed by even the Mew Mini. Here's its big brother, the Mew Mini Plus. And here's the RG 35XX. If you want a real handheld, here's a Game Boy. And a AA battery. And a tea bag. It's about half the size of a Roy Bush tea bag. Let's see how long it takes to boot up. Just over eight seconds, not bad at all. So we're first greeted with a clock, which we'll have to set. Then we're into our application menu. Here we've got a few tools. We've got the clock, explorer, things like that. We can change language. We can also test the inputs. It's pretty responsive, but it's just so squishy. In the emulator menu, we have Game Gear, Game Boy, Lynx, Master System, Mega Drive, NES, Neo Geo Pocket, PC Engine, PlayStation 1, Pocket Mini, MAME and FBA, SNES, and Wonder Swan. The next menu is for media, so we can play music or watch some videos. There are a few samples on here, like this Need for Speed trailer, or if you want to sing some Tsai Chin, this should be right up your alley. That's the other things we can do. We can change skins, change wallpaper, or we can just get right into the games. To start one, we just select one from the list, and here we go. So this game usually has issues with sound on certain emulators, but as you can see here, it's near enough perfect. Oh yeah. If we hold select and push B or X, we can adjust brightness. We can change volume by holding SELECT and pushing Y or A. If you push SELECT, L and R together, you can toggle the status bar. Then using SELECT with the D-pad, you can change display mode and zoom settings. It's pretty handy to have, but doesn't work with every emulator. If you don't want to use the hotkeys, just use the menu on the side, and it's a very simple GUI. We can even save and load states. It's about time to get into game testing. First up is Game Boy. 
And as we mentioned earlier, yeah, this one's fantastic. Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance. And with this we can have the correct aspect ratio. We can zoom in and also cut the edges off the screen. Nintendo. Super Nintendo. It handles Contra 3 quite well, but other games not so. F-Zero, for example, seems to be using a slight frame skip. And Mega Man X3 either is struggling due to the RG Nano's low spec, or because they're using a dodgy ROM. Now for the Sega systems. The Game Gear runs okay, but even with the display options, we can't get the correct aspect ratio. Master System. Much more smooth than the Game Gear, and much more enjoyable. Next up, Sega Mega Drive. It looks okay, but it feels like it's not quite full speed. It's at the level where most people just don't notice it. PC Engine. Runs well, but as the RG Nano's hotkeys are set to the select button, it can really get in the way. Hitting Turbo and Chase HQ can be a nightmare. Pocket Mini. What? Neo Geo Pocket. Atari Lynx. Wonder Swan. It's interesting that the whole display is rotated, but we can't rotate it back. For Arcade, we have the option of using FBA 2012 and Main 2000. Street Fighter Alpha 2 runs quite well. But again, there are no options to adjust screen aspect ratio. It stretches to the extent of the screen, and it just looks terrible. Also, pulling off a super is very difficult with a squidgy D-pad. Next up, Sony PlayStation. 2D games like Mega Man X6 run pretty well. But if we move to 3D, yeah, things can get pretty slow. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The RG Nano is extremely cute. It's tiny so you'll be able to fit it up your bum, and with its durable metal case, it'll be able to last for a long time. As for the cons, the squidgy buttons are a bit, uh, as is the limited spec. The software is a bit half-baked, and we're a bit fed up of seeing these unbranded micro SDs. We can only recommend the RG Nano if you absolutely need the tiny form factor. If you're intending on actually playing games, then an RG 35XX or a Mio Mini Plus is a far better option. Here's a big thank you to all others on our Patreon. You guys are amazing and we really appreciate your support. Here at Team Pandora we make video reviews like this, video tutorials, and help fix them cheap arcade boxes, and the Ape Avenger Mini. If you want to help support our work, please jump on, or you could like, subscribe, and bell. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Hey, it's me, John Luke. If you want to stick around, we have many other videos on our channel. Please have a gander at my space pant.